All right, so today I want to walk through our interactive model for Project NEON. And this is a significant project because it was our first major interactive project. We built it using Unity 3D. And I'll just kind of go through our development process, show some of the features, talk about maybe how our process has evolved since then. This was uh, almost four years ago since we, it was four years ago that we were working on this. Uh, we finished it up maybe three years ago three and a half, something like that. So this is the proposed condition that you're seeing right here. And one thing that is really, what really makes this powerful is that we have both existing and proposed in the same model. And so no matter where you are, you can independently switch uh, existing versus proposed, and that's independent of the camera system. So that was really nice to be able to show the impact of this project. And to learn more about this project, I invite you to check out episode one of We Make, Engin we Make Civil Engineering Look Good podcast. You can also check out episode eight, where I talked to Susan, Susan Berkeley, who is kind of head of the public outreach, or I think it's called public involvement. So anyways, we first started by building our existing model because the design was still in progress. This is a design build project. This was the, uh, this still is the largest infrastructure project, public works project in Nevada's history at over a billion dollars. And so while they were, we were on the design build team and while they were uh, designing it, we started building the existing model. And you can see we put a lot of effort into making the skyline of Las Vegas look somewhat representative. Uh, a lot of these we found in the SketchUp warehouse we brought them into Unity. We didn't really have an optimization workflow at the time, so we just brought the straight SketchUp files in, which really slowed down our optimization. Uh, I'm running, this is a GTX 1080 Ti, and I'm running about 30 frames a second right now. And, and also, just so you know, this was used for public outreach, so we wanted to teach people about this project and how it was gonna look when it was done. And again, this is how it looks when it was done. We started with the existing model. Uh, we got the aerials in the terrain, from the project. Usually they fly the project and get a six inch dim, which is a, a surface with pretty high quality. And we, we cleaned it up a lot. If you've ever looked at an aerial file, there is a lot of like flat cars because when the plane flies over, there are cars in all the parking lots and such. And so we spent a lot of time cleaning those out. And if you look out far enough, you can see kind of what that looks like. But in the adjacent area, we spent a lot of time cleaning that up Added a lot of the strip buildings. We, we had a building pack, all these brown ones. There was some sort of Las Vegas auto-generated building pack that we put there. Some of these, you know, this one was, we had to model it ourselves. Um, and then a lot of these adjacent buildings, we definitely had to model ourselves. Sometimes I would hire contractors to do some of that. I think this World Market Center, we, uh, I found a model on SketchUp and then I cleaned it up myself. This downtown Las Vegas model was actually done by my brother, who's a school teacher, and uh, he's kind of taught himself to be an artist in the in his spare time, and so he's he's done a lot of big model packs like that. Uh, we're actually cleaning this up for another project right now in the area, and then we had to model a lot of the bridges and such. We had an artist just focus on bridges. We used as-built drawings, which are like PDFs. Um, showing how the project, how the, the bridges were built. Some of these were built, you know, 40, 50 years ago. This is the Spaghetti Bowl of Las Vegas. This is I-15. So that's how we started. And then we started getting proposed files and we started integrating them in. And we built a little phasing script that would allow us to switch between existing and proposed like I showed. And that's, that's really helpful. We also, this was, like I said, this was our first interactive project and so we had to build a simple traffic system it was just free-flowing traffic that would randomly generate so we'd build the, the splines and the cars would follow on them there's also sound i don't think you can hear that very well but the the closer you get to the vehicles the louder the sound is and the one thing we did eventually is we built out some phasing which was kind of cool uh, this wasn't initially but eventually we we had these different phases because they had to move traffic over. Uh, then they had to move it to the other side. And this was really helpful. A lot of these ended up on our local news, uh, the videos that we generated from it especially. So let's talk about our menu. 
over here on the left, you pull it out. This was uh, designed kind of after the, the Google material design at the time, but our new ones have, are different now. So this first one is navigation. So things like major movements, other movements, neon from above, major intersections, neon up close, and then cinematic cameras. And you'll see some of these are blue and some of them are white. So the white ones, they're still cameras. And, and one thing that this interactive model was used for was that they built these touchscreen kiosks at the public information office. And so the public could, could go in and we wanted to let them move around as much as possible using those. And so we put all these different cameras in here and gave them names, especially these still cameras so that they could jump around. And now, and I'll show this in future videos, but we use multi-touch now and it's, it's much easier. So at this time, if you wanted to move, you had to have a mouse or you had to use this, uh, these preset cameras. So major movements, if I wanted to show, if we wanted to show I-15 southbound, for example, we do this and uh, you can speed it up a little bit. And so, this, so we had all the major movements in here. We had, we had other movements. Again, you can speed these up. And so these were used to generate our renders and uh, I don't have it here. We have a short key that would allow the, the render button, the render dialog to come up in the navigation and we could render out kind of in real time, like 1080 video. We usually would render 4K or even 8K and then downsample it and it really made for a more of a crisp look. So you get an idea, um, you can move all over using this. Again, this is really helpful to get, it, get it, give you an idea of the scope, such as something like this. this. This gray bridge you see, this is the HOV Direct Connect flyover, and it didn't exist early on. Um, it was phased in to these construction phases, and then it was finalized with traffic on it. And again, switching between existing and proposed. This helped also, I will uh, link up the video that we made with this, but we did a lot of cool existing before and after uh, transitions when we made the videos that we used for the outreach. Here's a really good you know, one showing the whole, whole project. It goes all the way down here to Rancho. And you can see that. We had some cool cinematic cameras as well that would fly through. And, and this was nice if we were either in the public office or even at pu uh, public meetings, we would kind of just let these, these run. And we use some of these, if you look at those videos, we, used, we would render uh, existing with one camera path and then we would render proposed and then we would stitch them together and fade between them, which was really nice. Uh, here's kind of a flyover look. And then the cinematic lo loop would go through all seven of these cinematic cameras. So if you were having a computer sit there and run this for a long time, it would just keep looping through these cameras uh, without much duplication. We had some up close cameras. They had these, uh, a lot of landscape design. They had these appliques, these grass things, um, you know, the texture on the bridge. And the cool thing about this whole project is it's pretty much built. And so I will show, uh, you can see some of the video that I'm showing. They've done drone shots, drone footage of the project, and it's cool to see how similar it turned out. And it's, it's kind of a, a way to critique our work. You know, one thing I've noticed is there's, you can just never put enough trees on what there is in real life. You know, we put a lot of trees, thousands of trees, and there's just so much more in real life. Um, but anyways, these up close signs, gave an idea of some of the detail that we put in here. We put every major sign, even even a lot of the lower level signs, like speed limit signs, stop signs, we put all that stuff in as well. One thing that you'll notice too is these things turn, and so they're supposed to turn in the breeze, which is kind of cool. Uh, you'll notice the cars popping in and out. Now we have a smart traffic system, which is nice because the cars will uh, stop at stop stop lights and stop signs and merge and do all these things. But at the time 
we didn't and so the cars just kind of pop in and pop out at the end of their paths and so again this was like 2016 when we first put this together and uh, there are some things that are nice about it. I mean, the, the level of landscaping that was done made our product look better. We worked very closely with the landscape architects to place trees exactly where they should be. Trees, bushes, rocks, you know, the trees blow in the breeze, which is really cool. They also had these sculptures, which uh, we were able to get the models from the actual landscape architects, just dropped them in. They were just SketchUp models. And so that's cool. This one ended up being bigger and blue in real life. And so that was kind of crazy to see the difference. And then also we had these, these light up panels underneath, which is cool. But in real, reality, they actually just alternate colors and they're there today. And so it's all, it's been cool to see all of the, uh, the stuff come together. Over the last couple of years, I drive this route when I go to the office, which uh, usually I work from home but I go down to the office at least once a week, especially when we're not in uh, coronavirus shutdown. Uh, we had this train animated, it just goes through and it really added to the realism, you know, especially you, you have the shadows of this power lines on there, it kind of looks kind of cool. And so this, this kind of blew the minds of the, uh, the Department of Transportation that we're working with the engineering firms, and even ourselves, because we hadn't done anything like this. And since, since we did this project, they've required this sort of interactive visualization on most of their major projects, and that's, that's been the majority of what we've done over the past couple of years. So um, just a few more of these up top views. You know, this one really shows how much was done. And a lot of the people that would come to the public meetings were the people that lived or worked in these buildings along here, and you can see how it impacted their lives. And then a lot of times they would want to they would want to know how the project was going to change their view. You know, if someone was living maybe down here in this house, we'd put the camera down. They'd say, "Okay, that's kind of what it looks like today. What's it going to look like when it's done?" And then we would show them this, and that was very useful. Uh, we also ended up using this for some of the eminent domain cases. So a lot of times with the eminent domain process, those that uh, have property taken from them will sue the government and they want to show why, um, why they should have gotten more for their property. So we did a lot of stuff like that. So another thing, uh, we had the setting panel over here and uh, this was kind of just because we could do it. We didn't use it that much. I mean, turning the buildings off you could do it in a pinch to increase your uh, frames per second, but we didn't do it that much. And um, you could turn traffic off if you really wanted to improve trains frames per second. And then we had the time, which was which was actually kind of cool. If you wanted to get a certain look for a render, if you wanted to see where the shadows were going to fall, all of that happened as well. Again, all independent. W one thing I want to show as well, you know, even if the camera was flying. Let's do Martin Luther King realignment. You know, you can switch the camera in real time, no matter where you're at, and that was really helpful. And when we did this, a lot of it was, um, we didn't have as good graphics cards three or four years ago. And so a lot of times we were just running along at like 15 frames per second, but everyone seemed to be fine with that. And when we rendered, obviously it would be um, 30 or even sometimes 60 FPS and 4K was what we tried to do as much as possible just to make it look as nice as it could. And then the last thing I wanna show is we added a driver's experience and you can do this using the keyboard, but uh, we actually had a steering wheel and we would bring it to public meetings. And this was a, a big hit. I mean, some of it was letting the public learn about the project, but some of it was just giving them something to do at public meetings, get them excited about the project. So you, you can see how fun people would have coming to a public meeting and being able to drive this. You can drop at different locations. So. 
And the reason it bumps is because uh, the physics mesh doesn't match the actual mesh that you see. We just had to do some simplifying for optimization's sake. And so that's why it bumps. But anyway, this is Project Neon Interactive Model. I would switch back to the other one, but we didn't make that possible right now. So uh, if you like this, let me know and I'll be doing more of these, especially during the shutdown when we're all stuck at home for a while. So anyways, I'm Sam Lytle with Civil FX, and this was the Project Neon Interactive Model.